This is A to Z, episode 124. Today's guest is Viviana Lopez representing Beaumont Animal Care. It's like they're trying to be too meta. We're going to make them an offer they can't refuse. Much better. Yeah. You can, you can, can I buy you a drink? You can, you can just not well, well, I mean, he did pick out somebody we know. Well, you sidestepped the question. That you technology does not exist. I'm Aaron. As always, uh, with me is my co-host, Rocky and Zach. So. <laughs> Welcome to A to Z Podcast. Well, we sit down with the folks that make Southeast Texas a better place to live. If you're new to the show, thanks for checking us out. A to Z can be found on all major platforms. But if you also want to talk to us, you can send us a text at 409-206-2971. That's 409-206-2971. Text us, send us uh, pictures, leave us voicemails. Send us a picture of your dog. Yes. We, want to, we want to see your dog. If you send us a picture of your dog, we will come up with some kind of prize. We'll give you a sticker mm-hmm. for sure. Um, you know what? Speaking of dogs... That's kind of what this episode's all about. You know, Viviana came on. She is from Beaumont Animal Care, which is our city's animal shelter. You know, we have quite a few. We have the ASPCA. We have all these other ones. Uh, But, you know, your tax dollars pay for this one. Beaumont Animal Care does a great service to our city. They take care of all the strays. They're the ones that come out, you know, when you make the call uh, and the animal cops come out. That's the one who does it. You know, that's (laughs) the the animal animal cops. Kobe Rookie. We should... Um, and we talked about a lot of stuff. If you listen in, we get into such secrets as, you know, feral cat colonies that are roaming the streets, causing harm. You know what I mean? Just just doing the work of killing birds. And also, you know, the good things and the bad things about working in a shelter and what's that like? Uh, what is it like to, you know, see the kind of things that you have to see and yeah. how, how poorly people treat animals sometimes? How poorly people treat animals, but then also how far people go out of their way to rectify that. You know, it's actually kind of heartwarming. It's a, it's a feel-good episode. It's all about these dogs and these cats. So let's get into this episode 124 with Viviana. Yeah, there's like really strict policies on that. Yeah. Like you have to have a soundproof enclosure and it has mm-hmm. to be a certain amount of feet from other houses or buildings. And a lot of people don't <laughs> follow those policies. And the neighbors, the neighbors. I yard in- chickens were okay. No, no, you can't have that in Beaumont at all. Well, everybody in the West End has them. I know, they're, they're not supposed we, to. Yeah, we get a lot yeah. of calls about complaints for that. The officers will go talk to the owners. Yeah. And a lot of the times they do comply and they'll just like move them off to some other property. But yeah. a lot of people also don't complain about their neighbors having chickens. <laughs> and <laughs> usually if people probably don't have a rooster, they won't complain. It's 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 always just rooster crowing that yeah. people complain about, mm. you know. To no foul. You're not supposed to. That's what it says in the in the charter. And then people, my neighbors people in, out there breaking the law. My neighbors man. in front of me and behind me both have goats, but I don't know if there's. I don't know. Yeah, that also you're supposed to have a certain amount of like acreage oh, per, per animal. Per animal. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people don't follow those ordinances <laughs> no, I bet, either. I bet, that, I bet they don't. <laughs> yeah, they don't. I want a it's yard great. goat. I want one. They're, they're cute. pretty neat. They are. They're cute. They're cute, and, <laughs> and they they hop around on things, and and you can do yoga with them, right? Yeah, yeah we, we had one we kept around at the shelter for a while just because he was cute. We didn't want to send him to the county barn. We liked having him there. <laughs> was it like a pygmy? Like yeah. A little, yeah, yeah, a little he tiny was little. One. He was sweet. He'd walk yeah. on a leash and everything. Well, we ready to start? Oh, yeah. We ready to start? Hey, Viviana, how are you? I'm good. How are y'all? Doing All very right. well. Very well. Thank you. Um, so uh, tell, us, tell us about where you work and uh, what you do there. So I have been at Beaumont Animal Care for about two years now. I do all of our social media, adoptions, and fosters. Kind of have my hands in everything, help with our events and all kinds of stuff. So Beaumont Animal Care, that's that's Beaumont's pound, right? Yes, it's that's the a, city yeah. animal shelter. So <laughs> if you call Animal Control about a stray dog, like they're going to call you guys. Yes, they'll send okay. one of our animal control officers and... In a day, there are anywhere from five to twenty-five animals that come in. So I'm about, to, about to call animal control in a day? on Rocky. Over yeah, there. in a day, we have four officers, and they each get calls nonstop the whole day. So anywhere from five to twenty-five animals come in a day. Anywhere from five to twenty. Five to twenty-five. How many? How many? Every day. Every day. How many are in there like at any given moment? Um, the highest we have ever seen is probably around the mid hundreds. God. That's when we get multi- – usually in the spring, like, dogs are having litters. Cats are oh, having yeah. litters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sometimes we even have three to four dogs per kennel. So, yeah, it piles up. That sounds like uh, – sounds like stuff like kennel cough and stuff like that can become a bad problem there. Yes, you get full, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dogs are pretty much always on medication for that, so we really? can try to beat it. As soon as we hear one cough, we try to separate them and start oh, medicating yeah. before it spreads because anything there – 
travels way too quickly. And I imagine it's like above and beyond way more dogs and cats too. Yeah, there yeah. are always way more dogs in the shelter than there are cats. Because um, cats can kind of take care of themselves, you mm-hmm. know? They don't really. Yeah, and since feral cat colonies are a thing, people don't always call on them. <laughs> A stray yeah. cat doesn't bother someone as much as a stray dog will. So right. we have, yeah, we usually have a lot more dogs. Yeah, because stray dogs will go and dig in the trash and and kind of kill kids. cats and yeah. Yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah, that happens yeah. very yeah, often. Yeah, they'll do that. I'll tell you, it's it's people don't really. I don't think people really understand or uh, maybe respect how much of a problem like some of these dogs and cats are on the streets and 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 like especially cats mm-hmm. like a lot of, there, I know there's at least two crazy cat ladies in this city that I've yelled at both of them at <laughs> different times there's one who feeds cats in bulk behind star bowling mm. And there's mm-hmm. one that feeds cats in bulk, like behind little Woodrow's. Feeds them in bulk, like I mean, they they go get like 50 pound bags of food, Ugh. and they'll yeah. like cut it open, and it looks like a horde of like I'm talking a hundred cats running out of the woods and come eat that. Yeah, and I've like saw them, and I had to yell them like, "Hey, stop it! Stop <laughs> what you're doing!" Like, yeah, that happens a lot. We have a list actually of like feral cat colonies in really? Beaumont that we keep track of. Colonies? Uh, yeah, they're <laughs> y'all, colonies. Y'all are plotted out on the map like, yeah. <laughs> there's a colony of feral cats. And the it's people on the who move. feed them, they notice when cats aren't there. Even if yeah. it's 20, 50 cats, they'll call us like, hey, have you picked this up? Um, it's like, yeah, you're crazy. Yeah, but yeah. luckily we started for feral cats. We have a trap neuter release program, so we okay, pick them good. up, we uh-huh. fix them, um, so that way they're at least not reproducing once right. they die out that's done yeah so luckily that's that's pretty put a pretty big dent in the feral I mean, cat how colony many, how many feral cat colonies do we have in beaumont that we know of well, there's, there's about, two i just said yeah that we know, know of about six to seven that we know of. of colonies and you're talking like 20 to 50 cats yeah just living in an area and each, uh-huh. and each one of those cats <laughs> kills like at least 100 birds Probably twenty snakes. Yeah, that's why I don't see blue jays anymore. Like, yeah, they just, they just, they just indiscriminately killing like all the birds. So ground nesting birds, sorry, dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So luckily, the TNR programs helped a lot with that. Uh, yeah. It's made a dent in it, whether you believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I believe it. I. <laughs> that's crazy that y'all have to like track cat colonies. Yeah, you'd be surprised how upset. The people who run the cat colonies would get. Well, yeah, because well, they don't understand that, like, they're because they think they're helping like this this poor yeah. defenseless animal, but it's no, it's a little murder machine. Yeah, they don't need to be fed. No. They're, yeah. they're not. I mean, like, stray dogs have to be fed. They have mm-hmm. to be picked up. They, mm-hmm. well, they can fend for themselves when they become kind of feral and pack up yeah. mm-hmm. and become dangerous. But when they're by themselves, they can't do anything. Mm. Yeah, no, it's definitely yeah. something we've been trying to put a stop to. We tell people all the time, don't don't feed it. Ignore it. It'll yeah. go away. It'll leave your property. Uh, they don't listen <laughs> most of the time. It's cute. They're, they're cute, cute little kitties, yeah. you know, and yeah. they're pets, but they're also, they can they can take care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's definitely different than just a stray dog mm-hmm. being out loose. So are there any other, like, animal calls that y'all would get? I mean, uh, you, you said earlier that you had a barn. Like, do y'all, do y'all deal, with, deal with, like, uh, feral hogs in the area or anything like that? Or is this mostly domestic animals? Um, it's mostly domestic. We do get calls about feral hogs, usually near, like, tram and, like, oh, the outer yeah. city mm-hmm. limits. Uh-huh. Um, but the traps we have aren't big enough to hold a hog. So we have a separate <laughs> list of people who specifically, like, trap hogs that we have to give out. Oh, it's yeah. kind of like calling gator country for yeah, a gator and stuff pretty like much, because yeah. our traps, there's no way to be able to hold a hog in. <laughs> I mean, yeah. what do you, so y'all are usually going for y'all are going for smaller animals like uh, what raccoons and stuff like that. Possums? Yeah, raccoons, possum, cats, dogs, birds. Um, we get a lot of calls about bite cases, um, mm. just people picking cats that they've trapped for the program. Mm-hmm. It really just varies. We also get like the pig and goats, all that. Yeah, you get people's potbelly pigs that have escaped, and then they come to find out that there's really no such thing as a potbelly. Yeah, now the pigs like this big. Yeah, we you know? had one pig that came, he kept busting out of his fence. So for about a month straight, we'd pick him up. We already knew who his mom was. We'd just come <laughs> like, yeah, he's here again. She'd be there the next day with her truck to pick him up. <laughs> All right, hold him overnight. I'll, yep. be, I'll be there. Pretty much. That's hilarious. That's <laughs> sweet. Um, uh, so where I live, I live in uh, like kind of the edge between the center of town and the north end. And I live mm-hmm. close to a train track. And I'll tell you one thing that's really interesting where I live is coyotes. Yeah, we get like, a lot of calls about urban coyotes. They are they are starting to get bold. They just mm. walk down my road at night, and they won't let me pet them. No, they and I'm yeah. upset. <laughs> Please don't try to pet they, them. They look rough. <laughs> they look um, really rough. Yeah, we get a lot of calls about those, too. Um, but it's actually Texas law. You can't kill them or relocate yeah. them. So you kind of just have to let them be. Just 
find ways to shoo them away from your right, property. Right. A lot of people put um, like the automated sprinklers. Mm-hmm. It'll go off when they sense motion. Or I think like cayenne really pepper. So like it'll burn their feet. doesn't hurt them, but it'll irritate their feet. So and they're, they and won't cross their your nose property. too. They'll be yeah. Like, oh, I don't yeah. So we kind of like just try that. to give like irritants they can use to keep them off their property. So you I was can't, just kidding. You I, can't didn't, I, didn't try, I didn't try to pet it. You, know? you cannot. You cannot. What? I thought they were kind of invasive in a way. Well, they're, they're protect. Yeah. It's a protected species. It's not like a possum or a raccoon that's yeah. so like overpopulated. Right. I mean, at the rate they're going, it might get to that point soon. I'm not mm-hmm. sure, but I think I think. They might be a solution to those cat colonies, though. <laughs> it might. <laughs> We're going to get some just, like, Maybe hate we comments. Should leave the coyotes. I mean, what is this? This is yeah. like ecology, like nightmares, right? You bring in the coyotes to eat the cat colonies. Yeah. And then nothing's eating the snakes, and then the snakes start taking over the city. It, it's hard to balance like the cane out, toad, you know? you know? Yeah. Well, like, almost five years ago, we actually ha- picked up, like, a 10-foot-long snake off of, I think it was Nature's Street. Or, like, mm-hmm. a ball python? Yeah, yeah. a guy mm-hmm. had a couple of them. He wasn't feeding them enough, so they, were, they broke out of their enclosures out of the house, and they were eating, like, out, they were eating outside cats <laughs> yeah. and little yeah, dogs. But, yeah. Yeah, so someone called, and we ended up taking, I think, almost, like, 10 snakes from there. 10 snakes? Yeah. One of them was, like, the 10-foot one. He went into one of our dog cages. He was that big. I bet the dogs love that. Yeah, it was terrifying. Yeah. I did not go near them. They were like, it was like the dog cage in the thing. They just like, <laughs> yeah, were just, just barking. Up against the so corner like, just yeah, he was so big, he couldn't get out of the holes of the kennel. It was the only spot we could fit for him. <sighs> wow. Do you have to have a license to have a big snake like that? Mm-mm. I don't, I don't think, think so. Not down. in Texas. Well, not you, in Texas. Yeah. You don't have to have hardly anything for anything in Texas. Yeah, that's true. There's, yeah, that's there's, true. there's, <laughs> there's more uh, captive tigers in Texas than there is in the entire wild of the world. Mm-hmm. Like, people in Texas are crazy. Yeah, we are. Yeah, like, our so, animals laws yeah. aren't that strict. Yeah. So how is uh, how is the shelter doing? How's everything going? Any? Uh... Um, we're doing good. We actually have a lot of rescues that have been pulling from us lately. Mm-hmm. Um, we have rescues, the local ones, like the Humane Society. Mm-hmm. They pull a lot. Paws, Sweet Pups, all of them. Then we also have rescues we work with from Houston that relocate animals up like, north. Like specialty animals? Yeah, isn't yeah. that the... What's yeah. the one guy... Um, there's this one guy I always follows, Animal Kingdom. Yeah, Animal Rescue Kingdom. Yeah, Carlos. we've been wanting yeah. oh, okay, to talk cool. to that guy because because I've seen I've seen videos of like uh, he he basically picks up a bunch of dogs mm-hmm. and he goes up to Oregon or Washington. Yeah, we love oh, Carlos. Really? Wow. He's been Whoa. pulling from us for years. He was like one of the first rescues to ever pull from our shelter. Yeah. So when he comes, he'll take like a bus full of animals from us and he'll go up north. Um, Canada, Oregon, what Rhode is, Island, and he about adopts that? them out. I mean, are there less dogs up there? There are. They have really strict spay neuter laws, oh, so they I don't see, have yeah. strays running around the streets like we do here. And a so lot you of people can't even find a rescue want up there. To. Yeah. Yeah, no. So a lot of people out there want to adopt They're animals, hung, but yeah. they don't oh. have strays. Their rescues don't have strays. So here come all of our Texas dogs and cats up north, and <laughs> they find really good homes up yeah. there. Yeah. It's great seeing those updates. Yeah. It was, it, it was just, I never would have thought about that because we're so used to it down here seeing yeah. strays all the time you know at least uh at least somebody benefits from all of our irresponsibility you <laughs> yeah know? especially yeah. with um in southeast texas at least pit bulls and pit mixes that's what we get in the most oh yeah um so another well, every, rescue like, like every stray is some pit mix yeah and a lot know. of people aren't looking for that because yeah. of the stereotypes against them so that's uh, which are wrong left I was, it is <laughs> i was this close which to, those to trying to get that wrong. sumo dog oh he was sumo so was sweet. the cutest have you seen that dog uh, uh-uh. He got adopted, but he it was a Basset pit mix. Oh my god! And he and he, he looked like a pit, but he had, he was long like a Basset hound. Had, little, had the stubby little oh my little god crop ears. And, and, but <laughs> his ears were crossed. Yeah. yeah, but wow. and they called him Zumo. Yeah, because <laughs> he's a sausage. He's a little sausage. Yeah. Yeah. He's a little sausage. Oh, yeah, he would have been he would have been Rocky's yeah. best. He friend. He actually stayed at the shelter for almost a month until we made that video and made him pet of the week, and suddenly like oh, everyone yeah. went crazy for yeah, him. Yeah, he got adopted that same week. Oh, good. So since that's that's part of your duties, you know, is outreach and stuff like that, what are some of the strategies that you've come up with to get dogs adopted? Um, I think before I started there, a lot of people still had a misconception about the shelter. It's just mm. like this cold, like horrible place where the animals pretty much go to die. It's like mm. last yeah. stop for them. Um, and that's not true. Doggy so jail. Yeah, finding <laughs> someone, well, I guess me, um, <laughs> to make videos showing that that's not all that happens. You know, these animals have personalities mm-hmm. and they want to be with families and just showing simple videos of them playing fetch out at walks. Being we take happy, them out yeah. for puppuccinos all the time. <laughs> so just people seeing them do something other than sitting at the shelter, I think that's Looking helped our sad, image yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Pity only goes so we, far. We had, to get, we had to get away from the Sarah McLaughlin image. In the arms yeah, that wasn't helping us anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think just showing a different perspective of the dogs and cats and the way they're treated while with us has helped a lot with yeah. getting them adopted or pulled by rescues. Have you all seen an increase in, in rescues and things like that? Yeah. We have. In the past two years, we definitely have. Um, Anna's Angels, the rescue that pulls most of our pits, they adopt okay. up north to Canada. Mm. So now we have people from all kinds of states that will message just saying, hey, like, do you transport this dog? Can you send him up here? Um, so they're finally starting to look mm. at our shelter, um, finding animals that we could take So you have, like, a lot of eyes on the website now, I guess, from all over the place. Yeah, yeah. especially on PetFinder.com. We also mm-hmm. lo- post all of our dogs and cats on there. So people will search through there, message us about a couple dogs, see who they could get sent up. Yeah, uh, do, you, do you relocate, like, a lot of specialty stuff, like— uh there's that husky rescue in like Pasadena. So whenever you guys get huskies <laughs> and stuff, do you just like call them up? Hey. Can, um, um, it depends on certain breeds. Usually, if we get like something that looks purebred, people go crazy over mm-hmm. it. Yeah. They want to adopt it like in no time. Yeah. So usually, for an animal like that, either we have some a family already lined up, or a rescue for that specific breed right, has already right. reached out to us and said, okay. "Hey, we want to pull it when its stray hold is up." Yeah. So really it just depends. Yeah. Which is really which is really odd and I understand the concept that people have where they they want like this certain breed and mm-hmm. they probably have been thinking about it for a while, but in reality, we live in Texas and a lot of these animals that are pure breeds come from puppy mills. Yeah. So they're going to have a lot of you know, inherent problems later on in life, whereas mm-hmm. mutts are a lot more genetically healthy. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, if you want a dog for a long time and you also don't want to spend as much money over the life of the dog, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you might as well adopt one of these, like, one of these, one of these yeah. mutts. Yeah. Uh, last week, we had a German Shepherd. He looked purebred. German Shepherd puppy surrendered mm-hmm. to our shelter because the owner couldn't take care of its medical needs. He was born with a birth defect. He didn't have joints in his knees, <gasps> so he couldn't use his back legs. Oh, oh he was he was one of those, like, yeah, he wheelchair just dogs? Kinda, yeah, he's, yeah, he was pulled by a rescue, actually, in yeah. New Jersey, and they're going to get him a wheel- wheelchair. Yeah. He left <laughs> us this, I think, Thursday. He was just born without knees? He was born without joints in his knees, yeah. <laughs> See, that's... He and he was the though. sweetest dog ever. You know, he was so well-behaved. It's, it's terrible, because, like, that's just what happens to German Shepherds. They are yeah. so <clears throat> incredibly yeah. inbred. Yeah, so and hopefully been that way for years. whoever they yeah. got the puppy from let the breeder know because yeah. they don't need to be breeding anymore if that's how the puppies well, are going to come out. If he ain't got no knees, I don't know if he's going to be breeding, you know. Well, no knees. yeah, the parents, his parents don't need to be breeding yeah, they don't anymore. Need to breed. They might no. be too, too far gone. Yeah, yeah I mean, some of these no puppy knees. mills too, it, they'll be like, Six generations off of one dog, and then six generations off that one, and they just churn them out. Well, then you're t- then you want to talk about like the ones that are uh, doing pugs and mm-hmm. and yeah. English bulldogs and these these monstrosity dogs. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised by the amount of like purebred dogs that come in. That obviously they're mixed, but they're selling the puppies for a lot of money, lying mm-hmm. to the people, mm-hmm. pretending that they're certain breeds. Are people like surrendering these dogs whenever they realize that it's not that dog? Or? Sometimes oh, wow. they do, yeah. Or we get calls That's of people complaining, sad. but yeah. there's only so much we can do about that. Like, sorry, you got lied to. Yeah. But that take that to small claims court. We can't really right. do anything yeah. about that. When puppies are like puppies. They all pretty much look the same. Yeah, you can't all, tell. All, yeah, like a German Shepherd and a Pitbull puppy basically look the same. You know what I mean? They really do. Yeah. And then they keep going tall, but they don't. They don't grow longer. Yeah. Or, yeah. So it's hard. It could be as a consumer. It could be. I could see how it'd be very easy to get lied to. Yeah. You even know? Um, at our shelter, when we get something and it looks purebred, we still always tell people like we can't guarantee you right. the breed. You need like, to, yeah. well, I'm not going to tell you yeah. it's full bred because yeah. we still don't know its background. It was picked up as a stray. And, and then you are, also yeah. probably don't want to promote that either. No. You know, you, no. You probably are saying like not. it doesn't really matter. If it's purebred yeah. Or not. And either yeah. way, it's not like we make a profit if it's a right. certain breed. Our adoption fee is a set price. That's is what there, it is. Is there a certain type of dog that's like the hardest to? To, to adopt out? Is it more just personality than our temperament than uh, than what they look like? Or is it, is it looks? Is it, A lot of it is looks, um, I would assume. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Um, most time people would just write off anything with like the blocky head because they like think pit, it's a pit yeah. mix. Yeah. So a lot of times people write that off. But also a lot of our lab mixes, people don't want them. Mm. Really? Yeah. Um, it's weird because I, I thought Labrador is like the number one dog in the country. They are, but I think it's because it's the mixed part. They could be mm. either mixed with Kerr or something else. They don't have the full lab personality. Yeah. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're just super hyper <laughs> or just, just super goofy. destructive. Mm. Yeah, so it's not something people are always looking for. Mm. So I think that's what we struggle with the most. 
I, maybe, I mean, I look for dogs coffee. shaped like sausages. So <laughs> you I, think look like I, think, I think that's my I think that's my thing. I don't know. We had another one last week. He already got adopted, oh. but this one was black. <laughs> have to keep an eye out. You look for sausage dogs. Sausage I, dogs, man. I can't look for any other dogs. I wish I could. If I could, um, if I could adopt all of them, I would. You know. But volunteering would be cool. I don't know. Like, what what kind of stuff do you have for volunteers? People that are looking for for, um, for all of our volunteers, we have an orientation they'll have to go through first, kind of learn the do's and the don'ts of the programs, where you can or can't go at the shelter. Um, but they can really do all kinds of stuff depending on their age or experience level. Um, if you're comfortable walking certain dogs, we'll let you do that. If you just want to bathe them or just want to socialize, um, we have a little room that we converted to, we call it the quiet room, where mm-hmm. you could take an animal that's probably really shy or stressed out in the shelter environment. It's a quiet space for them mm-hmm. to kind of start mm-hmm. adjust and you can see their personality more. Mm. So it really just depends. We have all kinds of activities our fosters, I'm sorry, volunteers could do. <laughs> so say somebody owned like a big old van and they want to just like <laughs> load up 12 dogs and take them to the park. Could somebody volunteer to do that? Um, Probably, but we would probably send one of our staff members with them just because oh, so yeah, many yeah. dogs, you never know what you. personality is going to mix with who. Right. But um, last year over the summer, we actually took about probably almost 12 of our dogs to the Humane Society. They let us use their doggy pool, and we just let them go crazy the whole day. They, they have loved a doggy it. pool there? Yeah, they have someone donated a dog-shaped pool oh, okay. it's shaped like a bone. Yeah. <laughs> and so they let us take a bunch of our dogs over That's there because we don't have a pool. So they yeah. let us use theirs. They had a great time. <laughs> and also, do you guys have like a... You guys have like foster programs. We you have do. Certain people that will do that. Um, we have fosters for all kinds of stuff. If they only want to do bottle babies, like kittens or puppies that either don't have a mom or aren't getting enough from the mom. So fostering you can do that. is fostering is kind of like you can just keep it at your house. Pretty much. So it takes the load off the shelter. Yes. And kind of gets it because I know they 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 probably. Don't enjoy being in there. No, the shelter environment can be really stressful to a lot of dogs. It's different smells, mm. sounds, being surrounded by so many animals, people coming and going. Um, we have some really regular fosters that help with that a lot. Um, and having a foster take an animal home gives us such good insight to how the animal's personality really is. Because mm-hmm. um, you get to see if they're potty trained, how mm-hmm. do they get along with other dogs, how are they in the car. Or even just how do they act in the morning throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So it helps a lot, especially getting those photos and videos where you see them in a home environment. Mm -hmm. I know uh, I used to have a friend that would would foster dogs and he had like all the adopt me bandanas and stuff like that. And would take them to like Luke's and stuff like that. And the Mm -hmm. dogs would get lots of pets from strangers. Yeah, we recently started with our pets of the week. We would take Mm -hmm. them out somewhere for an adventure and we'd have little bandanas on them. They'd start getting attention. It's actually helped a lot with getting them adopted. Oh, I mean, all all you really have to do is is put that dog, put a happy dog in front of somebody and tell them that you can have this dog. And they're they're going to be like, oh, really? Especially if they got kids. (laughs) (laughs) That's what you got to do. You got to start going to the the family places with them. Yeah, we've gone out to a couple of um, local places. We have gone to Luke's. We've gone to Mm -hmm. Starbucks. um, We've gone to Dairy Queen for the ice cream cones. (laughs) We've taken them to all kinds of places. Do you guys do the stuff... um, like the events like at PetSmart and stuff on Saturdays and the like adoption events and stuff like that? Um, we're working on our application to go to PetSmart because okay. yeah. you have to be approved there through their oh, adoption partners and all that. So we're working on that <clears throat> process right now. Um, but we do go to a lot of other city events where we'll take some of our dogs out um, to try and get them adopted. Mm, that's really cool. Like uh, like to Dogtoberfest that just yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah we like love that. Dogtoberfest. We're there every year. Um, one of our mascot Toro actually he won I think it was best dressed this year for Toro? Doctoberfest. Yeah. What is Toro? He is a he was actually born at the shelter. His mom was picked up as a cruelty case. Oh wow. Um she we didn't know she was pregnant at the time, but she was pregnant with twelve puppies. Oh jeez. Um she, when she came in, we just thought she was bloated with heartworms and she was like in the process of passing. That's how bad of shape she was in. Mm. Um she couldn't even walk. We had to carry her into the shelter. Um but a few days later out came 12 puppies. Toro was the only survivor out of all 12 Aww. because she was sick. They were yeah, all yeah. had horrible mm-hmm. immune systems. Um, we had to pull them all off of the mom. So literally all of us took home like four puppies each. And out of all 12, Toro was the only one who made it. So we couldn't get rid of him after that. Whoa, that's so like, he's, he's the shelter dog. That's yeah, a, he's that's our a shelter mascot. Dog. Oh, yeah, shoot. he lives with our vet tech now. And he comes up to the shelter every now and then. We take him out to events. Um, we're all pretty attached to him. There's no I way we to, could get rid of him after that. I bet he's got an Instagram, don't he? 
He does. Yeah, and he does have an Instagram. <laughs> I'm bound, like, Him I'm and his honestly, shepherd that brother down. share an Instagram. How do, you, how do you manage the emotions of having to, to see so many animals just in need? And, um, and scared, and I couldn't imagine. I could. I, don't, I mean, maybe you get numb those, to it yeah, eventually. Those cruelty cra- cases like that, that would, mm. ooh, that's hard. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a lot harder when I first started, but I think it's also important to not block out those emotions because mm. it makes you want to help them more. Mm. If a dog comes in in horrible shape, you want to give it to a home where you know he's going to look so much better and he's actually going to be, he's going to have attention. He's actually going to have a family. Um, we've had so many horrible cruelty cases come in. We had... I think it was last year, um, the dog that was dragged by a car. Mm. Yeah, it was it was a horrible case. He had like third degree burns. Like on purpose? <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get much information oh. in the investigation, so we can't say for sure. But he was dragged for three miles oh. before someone like flagged the person down and got him to stop. Um, so he stayed about a month at our vet getting hydrotherapy and surgeries and treatments. And luckily, New York Bully Crew, a rescue, they pulled him and they covered all his medical bills. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we got an update not that long ago. He looks so good now. He's with a new family. So... Got his hair? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He looks so much better and he was just the sweetest dog ever. So is that like, do y'all get like certain amounts of funding, I guess, mostly from these other... These other organizations, like how does it? I mean, I know it's a it's a it's a city provided mm-hmm. taxpayers pay for it, but it's like I don't know just how how to work that out when when to save a dog and yeah, and that's another reason it. we depend so much on donations. Mm-hmm. Um, like if we have a dog that's going to need more medical care than we would usually give an animal because we have like a limit for each, that's when we start asking for donations. But we also have taken into consideration their personality. If it's an aggressive dog that we don't think we can even adopt out, right. mm-hmm. but if it's a f- super friendly dog that's so outgoing and we can see it finding a family, then we'll ask for donations. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a Doberman mix come in last week that needed her front leg amputated. Mm. Um, so we asked for donations, and luckily we were able to raise them. And she's available for adoption now. She's looking for a new home. She's a little three-legged. She's sweet. She's a little tripod. Sweet little mm-hmm. tripod. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's Adobe, though. We'd probably keep up anyway. Yeah, she hops around like nothing. You'd think she had three yeah. legs her whole life. <laughs> yeah, those dogs can adapt like super yeah. quick. It's it's. There's that one dog. Have you seen that one dog that almost looks like a T Rex because it has like no front, oh, front yeah, arms? Oh yeah, seen that one. <laughs> I don't know. It just like it just the, it, the literally wonder dog, super it, dog. It walks like a chicken. Yeah, it's like the coolest thing. Yeah. So, is there something you're gonna do uh, for like Christmas or anything like that? Are you trying to? So like uh, like a Christmas adoption sort of yeah, event going um, on? Yeah, COVID's definitely changed a lot of our plans. Usually we'll have a huge event for every major holiday. Now mm. we have an adoption event every month where we reduce adoption fees to $20 for all the animals. Oh, wow. Yeah, that still includes the spay and neuter, the microchip, vaccines, flea prevention, dewormer, all of it. Um, but this year for Christmas, we're actually going to be joining the Main Street City Organization mm-hmm. for um, – a Christmas event they're going to be having downtown with by their Christmas tree. Is that so the, we're going to be uh, out there Main with Street some Market? dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they invited us out to their Christmas it's like event. December third, so. I think. It's that week. Yeah, I think it takes yeah, place over the, the whole week. Fifth, they do. Fifth, they yeah. do. They'll have it at the Civic Center. Yeah. And uh, they're doing an event at the Jefferson. Mm-hmm. And just all kinds of good yeah, stuff. Yeah. So they're going to have us out there by the tree. We're going to planning on taking some dogs out there, and we have some Santa costumes, Put and a wreath Christmas on sweaters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're planning on being out there, and we're going to turn that into our like reduced adoption fee event. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. that's really awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Absolutely. We haven't had as many events as we would have been able to this year. Yeah, COVID is. Uh, it's put a it's put a damper, on, damper a on a lot of things. Yeah, things you wouldn't really even has. imagine. Like I would have never imagined that would have hindered pet adoptions in any way. You know, yeah. it's funny. Well, when the quarantine first started, we were getting a lot of people wanting to foster or adopt because they were going to be home for long stretches of home, time yeah. now. Yeah, but now that a lot of places started to reopen, people have gone back to work, so we've seen kind of like a slump. A yeah, kind yeah, of people downhill. Are, people are tied up back to normal. Normal, I guess. Yeah. 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 So, um, it, so can people just come down to Bowman Animal Care and check out the dogs at any given time? Do they have to make a, a, a um, de- like a 
appointment or something? Yeah, right like? now we're doing everything by appointment because mm-hmm. of COVID. We're not letting people just walk into the shelter. Um, but we have all of our animals updated on our Facebook page or Pet Finder. So mm-hmm. we just ask that they go online, see who they're interested in meeting. And then that's mm-hmm. the animal that we'll take outside to either our play yard or meet and greet mm-hmm. room for them to oh, see. Very cool. And yeah, I'm sure they can get a hold of you all through social media, yeah. phone number, and any of that. They can call us, email, Facebook, Instagram, anything. Yeah, and they'll get a hold of you mm-hmm. Very cool. Well, I like to um, think we're pretty responsive. Yeah, well, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, you, you guys got to be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, is there any anything that you'd want to tell anybody that's coming up, or anything going on that you want to try to, uh, you know, that's movie important yeah. right now? Any, yeah. Anything. Um, well, we do have our free spay and neuter program. If you live within the Beaumont city limits, you can get two vouchers to get your animal spayed or neutered for free it's two vouchers per household per year oh, wow. um so yeah as long as you have your driver's license that's, and a utility that bill all. that's really handy i didn't know about that at all yeah we're trying yeah. to limit the strays yeah. so as long as yeah. your utility bill and id list an address within the beaumont city limits you can come apply for a voucher and we'll get it set up with our vet that is oh, awesome wow that's really cool. i mean that's mm-hmm. like that's like a couple hundred bucks right there yeah we do first yeah. come first serve so right now we're already scheduling appointments into january oh wow. so that's great mm-hmm. Well, it's great. Uh, well, thanks for everything that you do yeah, and, and for taking care of the strays and and, and increasing awareness and, and building up that social media so that we can mm-hmm. get more of these dogs adopted. Yeah, right. trust me, anything to help get and them just out. Mm-hmm. Get these dogs off these streets. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an important, uh, y- y'all play an important role in, uh, in the city and, and, and we, we like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm good just stuff. hoping a lot more people either take notice, volunteer, mm-hmm. donate, foster. Literally everything helps. Uh, we're going to have all that information uh, in the bottom of this episode, and we'll uh, we'll spread yeah. the word as best we can. All right. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having it's me. It's been fun. We <laughs> might go give those dogs some puppuccinos later. Oh, <laughs> they'd love it. Trust me. <laughs> all right. All right. Big thanks to Viviana and uh, Beaumont Animal Care. Thank you guys for all that you do uh, and continue to do. Yeah. And we want to do a special shout out to our patrons on Patreon. They help us keep these lights on and pay a couple bills. We're going to say hello to Mr. Jordan Stringer. Hello. So kind. So Brian kind. Castino. Hello. Such hello, a good Doug person. Waldrop, Michael Sarr, Ben McClellan, Randy Big Edwards. Hearts. Hello, y'all. Uh, Allie Gillette, Allison Pierce, Lauren Bibu, Wes Harden, the Jacqueline best. Stockdale, Damon Rambin, Hannah McMahon, Nicole Tony, Henry Brown, and Will Young. Y'all are awesome. Y'all have been, and all these people have been with us for quite some time, and uh, they really do help us out uh, making ends meet at this non not for profit show that we that's run. That's right. Here. That's right. Uh, you know, we support uh, local local organizations and people, and you know, if you want to support somebody like us, then you can go over to patreon.com forward slash a two z b m t. Uh, that's right. And next up, we have for you next week's episode. It's going to be a two z one hundred and twenty five. With, That's uh, a milestone the, right there. It is, yeah, yeah. It's a hundred and a quarter. Uh, the enigmatic photographer Dylan Newton. We're going to talk about, um, you know, his crazy style. It's a little bit. It's very eccentric. It, it's very cyberpunk. different from everyone else. Cyberpunk. We're going to talk about the genre itself and how he got into it. So come on back next week if you care to get into that with us. <laughs> All right, come back now. You heard? You heard? Yerd. 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 Yerd.